Hello, may I speak with Paul Roma, please? Uh, this is Paul. This is Adam Smith calling from NobelPrize.org, the website of the Nobel Prize in Stockholm. Okay. Well, first of all, many, many congratulations on the award of the Prize in Economic Sciences. Yes, yeah, well, thank you. You sound nicely calm. <laughs> uh, I think it takes a while uh, for the... Um, it takes a while for this to all sink in. Um, so. I can imagine. Uh, I, I won't ask whether it's a surprise because, of course, a couple of years ago, NYU released a press release saying you'd have been awarded the prize by mistake. <laughs> yes, well, I was. I wasn't sure I should mention that, but yeah, that, that's um, unfortunately this is something that universities tend to prepare for, and I've sort of been through this drill, including this this release. It's actually not the first time that happened. There was an email that went out when I was at Stanford that, um, uh, sorry, let me stop this. Um, so, um, so anyway, I got some experience with, with this, but, yeah. um, uh, nobody, I think nobody prepared a press release at any university this time. And I, I was sound asleep. So it caught me off guard. <laughs> well, never mind. They can dig out the old ones. I guess so. Um, you've been awarded the prize for analyzing the relationship between innovation and the economy. And we all know that innovation drives growth in GDP, but what do you think is the most important thing that your work teaches us? Well, it, it teaches us um, that what happens with technology is under our control. If we collectively set our minds to improving technology of a particular type, we can do that. And it takes some collective action, some support for research or some provision of patent protection or a mixture of the two and some focused um, energy. It takes even policies like a commitment to open up systems of university education to, to everyone. But if we set our minds to improving the technology, we can improve it in a direction that seems important to us and even at a, at a faster rate. So um, instead of treating it as something that just happens to us, like the weather, we should treat it as something we can treat it as something that we we control. Mm. And is fostering research and development enough, or do you need more to make it work? Well, one other thing I should say is that if you look at the very long sweep of history, what you see is that the rate of growth has been speeding up, the rate of progress, and that's because there are more and more people who are all engaged in this process of discovery, and then once anyone discovers something, they can, they can share it. So a very important part of supporting this kind of research is making it possible for as many people as possible to know what we've already discovered, to communicate what they've discovered, and to share this process of learning what we know and then uh, going out and making making new discoveries. Mm. So it isn't just a question of what any one nation does, but it's also a question of how effectively we connect with everybody anywhere in the world and uh, share all of the insights that are discovered anywhere. But when, when I think about uh, say a pharmaceutical that might you know, help keep my mind sharp uh, in 20 years or 30 years. Um, I don't care if it's discovered in the United States or someplace else in the world. I just care if it, somebody discovers it. And if there are a lot more people all over the world working on uh, things, then um, it's much more likely that we'll, we'll discover them. Indeed. And, uh, and there seems to be a race among nations to become the technological leaders, of course. But then one also has to think about the nations that are left behind, perhaps. Yeah. Well, but this notion about this possibility of sharing is a very optimistic uh, result for countries that are left behind. They don't have to reinvent the wheel. They can uh, take advantage of what's already known. And so the challenge of development is figuring out what are the impediments that prevent that flow of knowledge to those countries, and what can policymakers do to remove those impediments and then take advantage of this very rapid growth that countries get when they start catching up. 
Lovely, thank you. Well, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about all this and more when you're in Stockholm in December uh, to receive your prize. Yeah. Thank you so much, and once again, congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Good, thank you.